It was quite a few years ago that I first heard of Janice and her legendary performance at Woodstock 69. I got my hands on Pearl with a whole bunch of other records from a top 500 list and I've had it on my phone since, waiting for Shuffle to catch me off guard and precisely that happened the other day with Half Moon, a feel good, upbeat, jiving song on the first side of the record. Reading up on Pearl, I am saddened to learn it was released posthumously a few months after her death in 1970 where she suffered a heroin overdose. Interestingly, the album was recorded in the failed four-channel quadraphonic format which would eventually become surround sound. It also held the top album slot for nine weeks and sold over four million copies. What's impressive about Pearl is its energy and dynamism from both Janice's charisma and the wonderfully involved, vibrant instrumentation behind her. The record rocks and sways between heartfelt emotions and feel-good rocking vibes. A powerful fusion of funk, soul, R&B and blues rock jives on with a colourful intensity as the accompanying Full Tilt Boogie Band illuminate these songs with fleshed out and inspired music, making a rich setting for Janice. However, they too take the limelight with bursts of powerful organs and guitar licks between the ever-present liveliness of the deceased Richard Bell's pianos. It's dense in its involvement, yet audibly crisp and inviting, each instrument having its space in the mix to shine as they jive in tandem. All of the bands give a riveting performance. You can simply just zone in on one instrument and be moved, but the biggest mover is Janice out in front of them, who has such a fascinating and emotional voice. With such sincere passion and expression in her singing, the half hit notes and croaky, scratchy strains she frequently visits become engulfed in the moment, sounding natural, charming, and despite technically being flawed, it's transformed by her charisma. She even goes as far to push her voice into a surging shriek on occasion, which is too an unleashing of urgent expression. It's truly riveting and endearing, her young death truly a tragedy. It's practically a flawless record, 34 minutes of emotional engagement with exception to one track which I can't help but feel modern corporatism has spoiled, as I'm sure I've heard it in a commercial of the same name, Mercedes Benz. It's a short love fidelity a cappella where Janice sounds a little rusty on her own, singing sarcastic prayers for consumerist products. It's really quite a nice piece, but feels tainted by its snug fit with advertising culture, where everything becomes a commodity. Even the song, which only makes sense retrospectively. My time with this record has taught me what I'm learning over and over again, that a musician's personal expression can transcend any preconceived musical preference if given a chance. The 60s is a fascinating chapter in the history of humanity, and certainly the beginning of the cultural freedoms we experience today. I've never been keen on the music, but I'm glad that's changing. Janice's voice feels free of its time, but the instrumentals are firmly rooted in the era, and it's great to hear familiar 60s aesthetics expressing something I can relate with. However, writing that makes me realise that it is perhaps the ever-changing self that is now coming around to this wonderful era of music and cultural significance. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to see some more of my music blogs, go check the website out. Every page is over a thousand articles sorted by artist, year, genre and more. Just hit Control F and have a search for something that interests you. You can find a link to the blog in the description box down below, but you'll also find links to my other YouTube channels. Check them out if you are curious. Thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe to catch the next upload.